Man, I thought this was that flip a rooting. I'm gonna flip the darker glass up. Oh, I was so sure of that. Anyway, guys, what's going on? That thing has been sitting here for a while now. Believe it or not, I'm still waiting for like 80% of the parts. But I um, guess we can kind of start off. There is like a mountain of stuff still left to do. We gotta get it sorted out. Stupid ass winter. Need some power. Uh, yes. Where, where did we left off? So Mr. List is telling me that we have some gauge issues. Apparently none of them work. Usually that's not good. Oh, it's too dark, you can't see anything. Be right back. So that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That is always zero. But it wasn't always like this. When I got the machine, um, that worked. The only thing that worked was the voltmeter. Uh, that didn't move, and that didn't move. Somehow, I got that thing to work, but not anymore. And uh, some, uh, on some occasions, this fuel gauge would kind of move. Okay, sometimes it's like half full, then it's full, then it's empty, it's full. It was basically going all over the place. Uh, but mostly it was just zero. I think I have some power issue here. Like, it works. And traction override also works. That does not work. Uh, and these lights, they don't work. There's either a bad connection somewhere or there is a blown fuse. But the fuse box, guys, the fuse box on this tractor is, well, everywhere. I don't know what happened to the original fuse box, but somebody redid the entire fuse box. Don't you just love when people just add a bunch of fuses everywhere and then you can't understand anything. Like, we got a bunch of fuses here, all of them are good though. A um, couple of fuses down there. The relay box seems pretty. Seems pretty. Yeah, seems pretty. Uh, oh, and there's like a bunch of fuses inside the gap, hidden under the, un under this thing. Like, what? How hasn't this thing got on fire yet? The manual is not really much help here as well because the manual is basically telling me look inside the fuse box. You can't do that for obvious reasons. So let's just try to find a fault. Pretty sure it's a bad connection somewhere. can't physically see any bad connections. It looks like something has melted here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this was like so when I got the machine. So this hasn't changed. Now I can pull up the manual. There should be some wiring codes in there. So I could later figure out what what is this? Why has this melted? Bunch of unconnected blocks. I have no idea. Basically, I checked all of them wires. Most of them have power, like this for example has power. There's even power in those melted connections. This one has power. Uh, the orange one doesn't have power. The white one does. It looks like, looks like something has broken off from here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. This is like a broken terminal inside the female terminal 
but there is no male terminal connection here. It's like I think that was before, before my time. This section though has no power at all, except the auxiliary hydraulic thing. I kind of feel like there is a fuse problem. Pretty sure I checked them all. Maybe there is a relay issue. Third person. Start. What is that? Switch power. Hmm. Glow plugs. Brake, which is <laughs> missing. What? I can't even make that out. What is the last one? S H slow down. You okay? You will not slow down. Are you high? Let's check the fuses one last time. That looks good. Stupid ass fuse box. Looks good. That's good. Okay. What is okay in French? Because that's that. That works. Dude, I think they're all okay. Might just be the relay. Looks intact. But there's no sound. <laughs> Dude, maybe this is the problem. What? It was a fuse. If that works. Also the voltmeter is reading something. Man, I've been driving around this thing for half a year. But all I needed to do was change a fuse. That is like ultimate level of laziness. That is not okay. Don't be me, guys. I, I suppose I just looked at them and I never tested them. Clearly this thing is busted, but I don't see a split in that line. Oh, never mind, there is a split there, wow. Apparently I'm blind as well. Clear split. Oh well. At least two out of four work. No. Let's try to get the other dude to work. This is not that important, but I guess it's okay. Don't care about that at all. I am unable to count past three anyway, so those numbers are too high for me. This is kinda important. I've run out of fuel like two times. It's annoying. So, would love to get that to work, but this part, I need to get that to work. Very important. The gauge has power. One is six volts for some reason. Not sure about that. Oh, and there's like a two volt as well. That's pretty interesting. So there's like four connections on that gauge. One has 12 volts, the other has six volts, and the third one has three volts. I'm guessing the fourth one is the ground. This one then. Yep, that's the ground. Just in case I ordered like a bunch of things. Mm. Looks about the same. Fafaria Corp. Made in USA. Dude. Made in USA. Wow. Should be good. That's gonna be fun, by the way. 
but that's not original. The fuel gauge, it's not original. It's some aftermarket piece of crap. I can relate to that on some level. Because this temperature gauge, guys, like almost 70 bucks from Bobcat. It is ridiculous. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it should move slightly, right? Or maybe the temperature needs to get up. On the old gauge, it did not move even after operating the machine for hours. Might just be that. Fuel gauge moves. Slightly. But right now the fuel tank is completely full. I'm 100% sure. Unless some clown hijacked my fuel. Very unlikely. Input voltage is always 12. Then there's, I guess the sensor is like two or six. On the fuel gauge, it's 2.2. On the damp gauge, it's 6.6. .6. Maybe it's the temperature sensor. Let's put a new temperature sensor in it and also change out the thermostat. Not really sure where. Not really sure where they are located though. Oh my god. You can't find anything in here. It should be the engine cooling system. Nothing, it's just talking about coolant. Dude. What the hell? Wasted like 30 minutes on the manual. Couldn't find anything. So I just went to YouTube for help. Apparently the um, temperature sensor is back here. Should be like a purple and white wire. Yep, that's a purple and white wire there. And the thermostat is behind that mess. Bunch of crap in the way. So, I don't know, I just need to bring out my chainsaw. There's so much stuff in the way. Maybe if I remove the muffler, I will have more access. Got to fix that anyway. feeling Seems pretty gnarly. I don't think I can fix that. I just love this. Just love it. And 
these parts are just mated together. Wow. What a ding dong. This might be an issue. I'm not sure I can uh, reuse this part, but we'll deal with that later. Definitely got some extra room. Okay, so I'm not really sure you can see, but the temperature sensor is that thing over there, and the thermostat should be under that thing. So let's, um, let's open the thermostat housing first. Man, I hate compact stuff. There should be at least a couple of miles between each component. Take a train ride to work on the starter. Dude, that thing is just so tiny. I don't understand how a thermostat fits in there. On on Joseph, the therm thermostat housing. Bro, that thing was like an apartment building. I kid you not. Probably somewhere in the book it says that I need to drain something. To be honest, this is also draining. It's just draining into my ground. What a mess. Wait a minute, I need to put something down there. Maybe I can just kind of quickly swap it out. Might draw fingers. Oh, now it stopped. Huh. You okay? It's a bit different, but it seems to be the right size, I assume. I have some good room here, so let's swap out the sensor before I put a new thermostat in it. Seems like a 19. No, that's bigger. 13th, 16th. It's very close. But I think 22 millimeters. And it's pretty stuck. Dude, I think that knot is messed up. I can't tell, is it turning or turning over? Dude, I think it's turning over. Yeah, that's messed up, that doesn't move. I wanna know what's the best part. There is no room to do anything. I can't even fit my chainsaw in, in there. Q 
you. Trying to get the socket on there. Apparently it's like a super duper perfect fit and I didn't mess it up slightly or just totally. Dude, I've tried everything. The sensor needs a 12, 11 millimeter socket. It's like a perfect fit. You cannot get that socket on there. There's no room. And I can't get a, a 22 millimeter socket on that thing. It, it won't go, I think. I think it's messed up. Some Gnipex maybe? Might do the trick. Junior Gnipex. It's either gonna be this or I'm gonna need to remove the head on the engine. So I would have enough room to place a block of C4 here because that's what's gonna happen soon. Wrong way. Is it working? Oh, some movement there. Wow, it's turning. Knightpex Junior for the win. Man, I love you. Cool, I got a new spring. I love springs. I wonder how a temperature sensor works. Guessing... Um, Actually, I'm not gonna guess, I have no idea. Pikuradi Witchcraft 7. Better not drop that thing. Gonna need to disassemble the entire bobcat to find it. spot to make a casket. That's about all I can do. It's almost the perfect size. Ära liigu paigast, no. Not half bad. Okay, so we changed out the thermostat, temperature sensor, 
temperature gauge. We checked all the wiring. It has power, it has ground, it has some weird 2 volt line, and it has some weird 6 volt line. It's been some 45 minutes trying to understand the wiring diagram. There's like 17 pages of uh, the stuff, by the way. It just keeps going. Could not understand squat. To my understanding, though, I don't think there's really much else I can do. Just gotta test if the thing works or not. <sighs> but before, before we do that, not sure. I should probably like buy a new one. Dude, I just washed my hands like five minutes ago. New muffler, though. Almost 400 bucks. Let's see what we can do with this one. Man, I don't think this is serviceable. More like um, it goes bad, you buy a new type of part. What is that for, by the way? I'm curious. Dude, I think something went horribly wrong right now. You know, I should probably stop being curious. This is not very good. Check it out guys, I think a bunch of sheep died in here. Stop smoking bro, too bad for the sheep. Piece of crap! Well, after you remove the chicken feathers, it doesn't look actually that bad. Just a stupid hole there. Oh, this can be problematic. Well, it ain't pretty, that's for sure. And normally, I would just buy a new one. I'm kind of broke right now, uh, so... Gotta make this last at least for two years. Maybe one. So, let's try to fix this bad boy. Should be pretty... Impossible.
so that's what's inside uh, Bobcat's muffler, guys. Nothing exotic. No gold. Miljonit amprit siin on sul peal, ma ei saa aru. This is just gonna take forever, man. This is insane. Dude, this takes a lot of patience. Uh, and my back is not agreeing to this situation. This whole world took me about an hour. It was quite interesting. I would say like maybe 70% of the time it was smooth riding. But down there, I just kept punching holes in the thing. The moment I pressed the trigger, there was a hole in it. I think I went... What? I tried the minimal setting which was like 50 something The thing wouldn't even work So 60 something amps Managed to batch this hole It doesn't need to be like watertight Some minor miniature holes here and there Not really a huge problem For example got a hole there, another hole there Oh look, the hole is bigger now. Yes! You just kind of keep punching holes until you hit some, some better steel. Keep building it up, eventually you will batch it. It just kind of depends when the better steel comes. But uh, I think this came out pretty decently. Mm, probably try to patch it up. Yeah, that's great.
not really 100% sure what that bleed hole was for guessing it's for condensation. But I think I can fix it. Dude, where's the... What? Where's the thing? What? What's going on? I'm not really 100% sure I can build from this, but I might be able to. You know, try. Not half bad. Real witchcraft is gonna be from the other side though. Honestly, don't even have words. Well, vomit kind of comes to mind, but it's definitely better than what uh, what we had before. I think whoever tried to weld it before, he used a stick. Dude, I can barely weld this with a mic. Trying to batch up this muffler with a stick. That is freaking impossible. But uh, not bad. I still need a. Um, Still need a patch on this location. Good. Need to patch this whole area, man. It needs to be a bunch of those patches. Yeah, welding that corner was really annoying. Hmm. Interesting. Guys, I think that's about it. Uh, took me about four and a half hours to mend this situation. I think it's gonna last a bit longer than a couple of years. I hope. I'm kinda thinking maybe I should skip putting that thing on there. I guess its only purpose is so you would not... Well, I suppose that thing gets pretty hot so you would not burn yourself. Uh, maybe I will put it back. I'm not really sure right now. Took me like two and a half years almost. Finally ran out of that thing. Luckily I got my backup.
sorry about the video quality so far in this video guys I kind of discovered something today apparently the camera recorded in 200 frames per second for the entire day I kind of noticed it when I started working on the footage and um, yeah the screen was just frozen constantly I was getting maybe like a quarter of a frame per second Dude, even my new computer that I was just recently built, the thing was just coughing blood. It could not handle 200 frames per second. Man, I almost cried. But men don't cry. So I didn't cry. Well, it was very close. But anyway, let's go back to the game. Need to get that white hobo fixed. Gonna, gonna need it soon. Currently I'm trying to re-render that content. The software is nicely doing it, but I just have to hope that uh, the thing doesn't crash for at least 17 hours. What do you think? Will it survive another day or do? Man, I hope this was worth it. that thing back there What a ding dong. Quite tight now. Guess it's not 100% the same. I'm sure there are some holes still left there. But I think I got like 90% of them. This side was the worst. Also that was pretty bad. <laughs> the 
this is leaking but I think it's leaking from somewhere there as well look at that oh yes mio what a piece of crap That doesn't seem right. Dude, what? Why is... This is a coolant line. Why is it like 140 degrees? Mm. Oh, never mind. The thing was on Yankee units. I was very confused for a moment there. Uh, 60, 64 degrees. The thermostat should open up at about 71, if I recall. So let's just keep this thing going. See what's what. The guy offered me two thermostats for this machine. The one that I got was 71, but he also offered me like a 85 something. I'm thinking maybe I should have got the other one, but uh, maybe 71 is better. A lot of smoke though. Hydraulic coolant. No, this is not even warm. Something else is smoking down there. It's kind of weird. I'm, I'm not getting this. What is happening? Hmm. 
It's just 70 degrees. I'm not getting why is it smoking. I know, it feels like water vapor. I think it's just water vapor from the pressure washing. The entire engine is still moist. Any ideas? I have none. Man, that thing doesn't even move. Or oh, the beeswax. Maybe some expired exhaust putty. I think it's like from 2000, uh, <laughs> 2003. Doesn't look right. You just gotta mix the thing up. You know that meme where there is a dog and everything around the dog is on fire and the dog is like, this is fine. Okay, well, I'm gonna let this, um, and I'm just gonna call it vomit. I'm gonna let this vomit nicely harden. If this 20, 21 year old paste will even harden. Wow, guys, I did math in my head. The hell. The Chernobyl paste seems to work. Great. Okay, well, I got almost all the gauges working now. The fuel gauge though, something's amiss. Looks like somebody did some witchcraft here. Man, look at that. <laughs> the gauge is like melted in, in the dashboard. This looks, uh, this looks almost like, um, like when Andrew was installing a radio in his work truck. Does that sound about right? I would say so. Uh, looks like a loose connection here. Yeah, I'm betting this is the ground and it's just unconnected because we have the purple wire there. Pretty sure that goes to the fuel sensor and the orange is just a power. So maybe it's a easy fix. Just hook up the ground to there. Fixed. Maybe it was just a missing ground. That would be very easy fix. Now I don't need to turn on the engine to get a reading from the fuel tank. Well, it's giving me something. It's not, it's not flat dead, but uh, that's incorrect. It should be, should do a couple of circles and stop at four. Might be the fuel sensor that's faulty. Or it might just be the gauge. That's not our original gauge. That is some uh, aftermarket piece of crap. But the gauge works, it moves. So it's reading something, but um, I'm thinking it's the sensor. I wonder where the fuel sensor is. Hmm. Fuel level sender. Get lost, stupid wiring diagrams. Hey, it already hurts. Fuel level sender. That thing there. It's like you need to access it from the under the gap, I guess. Yeah. About that. 
thing has no wheels on it right now. And I can't open the gap in this stupid cave. We got this roof on it. It's very low. Can't do that. But anyway, guys, let's leave the fuel system for a bit later. Actually, I have a OEM uh, original fuel gauge en route. So I ordered it like three weeks ago now. It should arrive in about six weeks. Yeah, all the parts that I ordered for the Bobcat, they are coming from the States. Takes forever to arrive. Once I get that fuel gauge, we'll continue with the fuel system. Right now though, some of them work. So check it for now. Also, we sorted out the thermostat. That's good. By the way, guys, what do you think was the problem? Was it the temperature gauge, the thermostat? or the temperature sensor. Personally, I'm gonna put my money on the sensor because that thing just broke in half so easily. The thermostat looked fine, probably shouldn't have opened it up, but whatever, at least we fixed it. Oh, and also we covered up the exhaust leak, hopefully for at least two years. But next up, let's check what's the deal with the rear lights. Apparently something happened there. Well, they look kind of broken. Wasn't me. They always been like that. I never break things, guys. Mm, I'm extremely careful. Dude, I need to build more tables. Where's the other one? Shouldn't it have like a bulb housing or something? Or maybe I can use the one in the machine right now. So I asked my local dealer. The guy wanted like 160 bucks for one. So I went to eBay and I got these two for just 85 bucks. The retailer stated that, that uh, it's gonna be shipped out from the States. I don't know, maybe... Did you guys get invaded by China or something? Yeah, I could probably use these connections. Shouldn't be a problem. But I'm not really sure if these wires end up somewhere. Well, they should, but I'm not sure where. Because the button is not in the gap anymore. Um, there's just a hole in the dashboard. But maybe I can find the wiring and then use the original wiring to power these lights. That would be sweet. Speaker. Why is it, why does it say speaker on it? Does this uh, bulb speak? I wonder why they didn't include the connector with the ding. Just gotta remember this black, red, yellow. Black, red, yellow. If I forget, guys, remind me, okay? Not so nice, this one.
totally empty. Dude, how am I supposed to even mount the thing? Maybe I can... Maybe that's why it was so cheap. The thing is missing like half the parts. Wait, what now? You can't mount this thing while that thing is in there. Somebody's getting their ass whooped. Glad it's not me. So I can't use that setup. Kind of fits there, but I could probably install it like this. But what? But bro, this looks like my lights have a boner. It's not very healthy. I'm not really sure how to proceed. Sadly, the other one is broken. Why did they not ship any light bulb assembly with this? I don't get it. There's no mounting point. No, no place to put the bulb in. No wiring, no nothing. At least this thing even has a bulb. Just connect the wires up and you have a light. Nothing there though, so weird. So weird. Also, is that supposed to be like a waterproof seal in there? Dude, that's just a piece of foam glued down. That will not seal anything. Either you guys were truly invaded by the Chinese or I just kinda got screwed over here. Because no way in hell this came from the states. Maybe it flew over the states and then they labeled it as from states. That would be cheating. I'm thinking I'm not gonna connect anything up there right now. I couldn't even do that. I didn't have absolutely no way to do that. Uh, but I'm gonna try to hook up some lights to the white ones at least get something out of this deal. What? No. Boy, that was close. So these switches are for the side lights, which I'm guessing is Indicator, hash lights, or warning lights, emergency lights, and brake lights. Three lights set up. I'm guessing this one is the ground. Yep. I wonder, I'm, I'm thinking like that, at least. That's the ground, yeah. Oh, a second ground, okay. Like two grounds here. There's nothing here. No, never mind. Yeah, same setup. And I assume this is the power for the inner lights. And I'm guessing the other one is there. Hack job, deep job. Bloody broken. Yep, so this is the power. I just need to locate where this is in the gap. The ground is already here. That's not a problem. Just need to locate some um, blue and white wire. Get a switch for that if there isn't any. And then I should be able to at least get these two to work. It's like a hole here. I'm guessing the switch was there beforehand. Somebody probably stole it. Or just was mad and punched a hole in there. I swear guys, somebody's sneaking around here. I'm hearing voices. Like, 
What is going on? Maybe I'm high. Or well, back to the game. Blue and red. Blue and blue. Blue and white. Well, it's here, but, <laughs> but there's like two of them. And it's the one that was melted. My guess is that there was a bridge here, like a loop. Or the thing went to a switch, which was located on this spot, and then it looped back there. Only one way to really find out. But why is it burnt? That's that's a mystery right now. So, so something definitely happened. Doesn't <sighs> melt that in there. Okay. So this one has light power. It probably goes through a fuse, hopefully. Not really sure. But one of these wires should reach at the back of the machine. Wonder if I can test it quick. I got a beep. But I don't know what I dodged. Okay, so this one. What about the other one though? I'm not getting any... That should also be the same line. It's the same color. Nothing. I'm not sure what this wire is about. Well, basically I don't really care. Okay, so this, this is what I need. Come on, man. Stop fooling around and work. Good job. Good boy. Uh, we need a wire, bypass wire, another bypass wire, a switch. I'll put there. In theory, the thing should work now. Just gotta, gotta hook up the um, lights. Guys, call 911 if you see smoke. Nothing. I didn't check this before, but check it out. There is a direct fault to ground from somewhere. So I guess that's why the thing was melted. Uh, there is a fault somewhere. So I could probably use the grounding wire still, but I can't use this because I don't know where the fault is located. Also, I don't really want to set my Bobcat on fire trying to find the fault. I remember this video by Andrew. Very easy way to find a fault. Just hook a battery to the, to the gables and see what starts smoking. Don't want to do that. Compact tractor, guys. Probably can't even see where the smoke is coming from. On the Kirovets, we can uh, find the fault that way. I mean, you can probably open up like a express highway between different components on that thing. I'm thinking I'm gonna um, get some new wire going, but it's kind of annoying. The wiring, it has to go like that through the engine somehow because the gap comes up. It's 
So if I want this to work, if I want those back lights to work, I need to get more bulbs because for some reason I have seven and only one work. Then I need to run a new wire through the gap, under the gap, under the engine bay or from somewhere into the rear end. I'm thinking I'm gonna do it, but I need to get the gap up for that. And you know what's the deal with that. So I'm gonna do it later. New lights installed, but nothing works. So going great. Um, let's try to swap out the horn, man. The horn, it has installed right now. What the crap is that, man? Thing sounds like a dying ambulance. Gonna try to swap that siren out. Shouldn't be that hard. Oh, by the way, guys, did I tell you I hate wiring? Well, I hate wiring. I absolutely hate it. It's, it is just pure AIDS. Okay, that's, that's probably a bad idea. Wish I had a bit more. This is like a leftover from my uh, Yanmar little excursion. Betting it will sound better than that stupid zombie siren. Oh my! Great curve, right? Yeah, Kind of deaf in one ear now. Check the Reno. Next up, some glow blocks action. Switch is there. Uh, it's not hooked up anywhere though. It appears that one terminal has broken off. The relay for the glow blocks right here, so this might be the issue. Uh, I don't think so though, but it might. And the glow blocks themselves right there so black is ground most likely that's output input and we should be looking for a blue and yellow wire in the gap somewhere light blue and yellow should be here Dude, what? There is no such wire here. So it's a bit confusing because um, this manual is not just for this machine. It's actually for several different ones. That's why there are so many wiring diagrams. You just gotta find the right one. 
which should be this one. So this is the gap wiring diagram. The engine wiring diagram though is this one. So we got the glow block relay right there, labeled 21. And the glow blocks themselves are 16. 21 glow block timer relay thing. 16 glow blocks. The tiny letters there, they basically say what the wire is. So for example, we got uh, 1A there. And the uh, 1A is a red color. The size is 12. 12 miles, I, I don't know. It's American. The thing is in Imperial. So might as well be 12 raccoons. But the wire we're looking for was the yellow, blue, or orange, blue. Dude, I, I can't see anything. Wow, my 20 glasses, so tiny. Should be like 28B, the wire that goes into the glow blocks. That one was blue and orange. So we can just kind of confirm here, 28B. Light blue and orange. So that's right. The relay on the machine, it only has four, four wires to it. But on the diagram, it shows one, two, three, four, five, six, six wires. So maybe it's not the same relay. It might be like a manual relay. This is a dimer relay. So you press the button and it will keep the glow blocks active for a period of time. So it's possible that the relay on the machine currently is a manual relay. So you just kind of hold down the button, which will activate the glow blocks. And once you let go, it will deactivate. Um, I'm guessing. But it's not the same with the gab wiring codes. Yeah, see this like giant block thing? It's it's on both ends, so this is um, like one giant block that connects together in the middle of the machine. It's between the engine and the gap, somewhere under the seat. The wiring goes, they change as the block continues. So on the engine side, the goats are different from the gap side. That's why there are two different diagrams, bunch of different color goats. Dude, this is so confusing. My head is about to detonate, but um, that would explain why I did not find um, any blue and yellow at the gap. Let's check here, so, gap diagram. Blah, 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 blah. Glow block light, number 21. Wire 28, 28. Blue black. Different. Yeah, it's not blue yellow, it's blue black. Blue black, where are you at, my man? Oh, here you are. So we got a blue black here. It's not connected to anything. So in theory, if everything is nicely connected, this blue black should be direct connection to the blue yellow at the relay switch. Yeah, only four connections here. I think this is a manual relay, not not that stupid timer thing. Although the relay itself, it has five connections. We can kind of test the setup here quickly. So the black one should be ground. Quickly check that. Yeah, the thick red one should be input power directly from the positive terminal. Confirmed. Kind of hard to tell, but uh, that's a blue and orange. I thought it was blue and yellow, but it's not, it's orange. Uh, that one should be connected directly to the glow blocks. Okay. And the final wire should go to the gap. 
And according to the book, it's the blue and black one. Just gotta check that it's not grounded. So. Yeah, it's not connected to anything or yeah, it's not connected to anything. So we can check. <laughs> appears to check out. So in theory, if I put some 12 volts on that blue and black line, relay should activate and put some power into the glow blocks and uh, then they should start glowing and stuff. <sighs> Definitely gonna test it out. If it doesn't work then there might be a chance that the relay itself is bad. But let's start from the rear end first. Check the glow blocks if they will even work. In order a new glow block somewhere. Yeah. Lately I've been getting a lot of these parts now. Got the new glow blocks for the thing. The new fuel gauge. New fan belt tensioner assembly. And decals or stickers. So I definitely needed some new stickers. Because we definitely need to avoid that. Still waiting for the axle bearings and the, the Yanmar service manual. It's kind of weird with that thing, honestly. So the thing has been labeled as shipped for at least three weeks now. But yesterday, the status was changed to awaiting shipment. What does that mean? It was shipped and now it's waiting to be shipped. I don't get it. Just gonna remove that bar. No, stay. Oh, you blow. You want again? No. No meters at that sad. Now in order to test these things, it should be pretty simple. You just connect the positive to the dip and the dreads need to go to the negative side. Bit big. Just gotta make sure you don't actually short the middle part out. Now if this area lights up nicely, then uh, the glow block should be good. There is some troubleshooting information online, but I remember that if the seal area or the thread area glows, then the block is bad. This one uh, seems to be in good working condition. Just gonna quickly check all of them. Yeah, 
See guys, that was that was not good. That was so much fun. Let's do it again. See, it kind of starts to glow, not at the dip, but ne near the seal. So that means uh, this plug is uh, internally shorted. And uh, it's not good doing uh, that heating thing. Kind of gives us some information why the blocks were, were disconnected. Yeah. They're all kind of different though. One started heating from the dip, the other one kind of exploded. Uh, and the last two from the middle. Let's um, check how it's supposed to be on a new one. OEM blocks. They were shipped from uh, Dexas, if I recall. So these should be pretty good blocks. From the dip and slowly. Okay, so that means um, only like one of them kind of works as intended. I suppose the other deal, which heated from the center, would also work. Maybe. So I'm not gonna throw these away. I'm gonna keep them just in case. Man, you never know when you might need them. And I'm betting you can use this as a earplug as well to remove uh, earwax. But the machine will get brand new blocks, most definitely. Oh, dude, that. That hole is just so blocked. It doesn't want to go down there. I'm guessing it's just filled with ancient suit or something. Use my excavator to press it down later. By the way, this is the first time I've ever dealt with glow blocks. None of my Soviet machinery, they don't have glow blocks. Very simple reason why. Because uh, they just didn't need them. They just built campfires under the engine. Bloody genius, if you ask me. like to use this thing. It's kind of missing a terminal though. Maybe we can like solder this piece of crap there. Eureka! Make sure the thing is not shorted together.
A switch that sort of works is not a good switch. Parts flying, man, left and right. Okay, that's good enough for me. Radicably bormuses my name in midnight. The diagram thing says that. The other wire, or the feed wire, 12 volt line, should be a black wire. Black wire. But I think I'm just gonna grab 12 volts from the starter switch. That would probably be the safer option. Over there. In theory, they should be like a fuse somewhere between the glow blocks and the relay, right? Would be kind of weird if there wasn't. Should get a pretty decent voltage drop once I press the button. Nothing, but actually I do hear the relay, the glow block relay, it's clicking. You guys tell me if there's any voltage there. I can't see anything. Is there anything there? I'm pressing the button now. Okay, so the relay is getting a signal from the gap, from the gap's button. But I'm not getting any voltage at the glow blocks. The relay is clicking, it's making this clicking sound when I press the button. But um, no voltage goes to the glow blocks. Which might mean that the relay is bad, or there is something else at play here. Here if we have any input power to this thing at all. But pretty sure I did check that. Yeah. So we have input, we have signal from the gap. The thing clicks, but glow blocks are not getting any power. What is this slowdown? I don't know, let's, let's try this. I don't even know what, what sh sh showdown. What that even is? No idea. It's exactly the same relay. Yep, it's a relay problem. So you know, when I press the button there, voltage considerably drops. So that means glow blocks are getting power. I just need to get a new relay. Or I can just keep using Showdown, or yeah, I have no idea what that crap is. It's uh, shutdown, shutdown relay. Actually, I, I might need that. I would say glow blocks work now. Just need to get a new relay thing. Shouldn't be that expensive. Before we proceed though, let's hook up the new fuel gauge.
Guys, if you ask me, this is kind of getting boring. I've been dealing with uh, stupid ass electricity work for far too long now. I am getting sick of this. I wanna build something. I wanna melt some stuff together. That's a lot more fun. <sighs> but sadly, I think we're not even close. Wrapping up the power stuff. There we go. So good. That that works. Anyway, um, the the hole is bigger now. I'm not sure how to make this thing. This thing stops for a moment. What's up with that? Weird. Like what type of a moron did this? I wouldn't be surprised if it was me. From another universe somewhere. Hopefully he stays there. Official Bobcat repair guys carried out in East Europe. What's up? Don't tell Bobcat though. My licenses expired like 17 years ago. So the right side panel thing is functioning at 100 percent you know i would say that's good considering it was like what five percent before the left panel though it's like almost prim it's just missing a button here the light switch so before i back all this together i'm gonna try to find like a switch that fits there don't need stupid holes in the thing hmm. we found this switch like the closest, humanly closest possible switch that I could find. I think the only other option would to just order from uh, Bobcat. It's a bit bigger, but but that's I don't think that's a problem. It's like rather be bigger than smaller. Nope. 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 Mm -mm. I know, let's call it this one. It's funny because I don't have a windscreen on the Bobcat. She's a bit fat, that is all. Exactly what it needed.
Adriana. Why right now? Because I'm putting a new wire for the rear lights, I also need to install some some fuse for it, just in case. I'm gonna leave the thing here, because it's fine. Currently, I'm not really sure where I can put the wire through, but uh, I'm thinking I can go like halfway, and after I get the gap up, I should be able to continue. We got a fully functional dashboard now. Bream. Supreme. What's next, man? Now this episode is getting kind of long now. Still a bunch of things to do. I'm thinking let's just kind of wrap up this episode with the electricity grab. So on that subject, we only have one more job to do. Got to install the master switch somewhere on a nicer spot. And everything else has zero things to do with electricity. So let's find a new spot for that switch thing and then wrap up this video. It's currently the master switch, or maybe some of you may know it like as a isolator switch. Guess it has multiple names. By the way, when I installed this thing on the Yanmar, a bunch of you said that uh, I installed it incorrectly and it needs to be on the positive end. All the Soviet equipment I have, they have the master switch thing on the negative terminal, not on the positive. And after doing just a tiny bit of Googling, uh, I learned that it's actually better to have it on the negative side, not on the other side. But don't get me wrong, both will work. I guess it's like um, some people will agree, others will not agree. And then there's the dirt pool, who just doesn't give a crap. By the way, I'm in the dirt pool. I just don't give a crap, as long as it works. So I'm gonna make like a bracket on this spot, mount the thing here, secure the bracket with a couple of bolts. If I need to remove it quickly, I can just undo the bolts get it out of the way. There aren't any better spots for it, actually. I don't get this design, though. It's so weird. Do you see those little plastic wedges? And then we have the mounting bolts or holes. Well, those plastic wedges actually overlap the mounting holes. Either it was designed for like a specific spot or the engineer who made this was a moron. Or mo or maybe I'm a moron. Perhaps I'm just missing some uh, information. Oh, 
install the link here. Install the chicken pitching there. Of mounting points here. We got that crap off. Let's go a bit higher on this point. Mounting like that. Wait a minute, I'm already confused. What am I doing? I definitely need that bolt. Don't cut that off. Dude, I... Actually, I think I can use this hole. I just gotta modify it a bit. Should be able to use it. Then I only need to cut this piece out. Don't need to do some weird... Plasma cutting art. Yeah, this plug is kind of weird. <sighs> but it was cheap, so... Plus the thing is rated for like... 2000 amps, guys. You can turn off the sun with this thing. Why did I think this would work? Dude, I have never changed this. For two years I've been using this tip. Is that normal? Most likely not. I wonder why the spring doesn't come with the new thingy. What a mystery.
make something fail. probably try to make that a bit better it doesn't look very secure mm. yeah you know what I think I should just make it a bit we're gonna double down don't think that hole is small enough for this wire don't really want to solder the thing I, I've heard that's not a very good idea I will take this connection over a solder point any day. Bro, this is barely long enough, wow. That's quite the dresser there. When I'm gonna hit steel, it's just mud continuous. Maybe I should have driven through that stream instead. It's like this. Uh, oily sand well I guess it keeps the machine from rusting away so that's a plus so much crap all around the engine it's just insane I guess you can never really clean these things as much as you would like. Unless you disassemble the entire machine. But who's gonna do that? Nobody. I'm gonna quickly fix that as well before I pack it in there.
too dry to hang on there. Okay, buddy. What? The beard is not long enough. No, I don't have any C4. Or DNT. But I have a lot of gasoline. By the way, guys, any of you have this model or something similar, do confirm. Do these things even have an uh, isolator switch? Would be cool if some of you confirmed that. Which side is on? Anyway, the master switch has been served. So, I was uh, hoping to end servicing the hobo in this video. Didn't go so well. Right, and we started at 12, gauge issues. And now 17. Oh yeah, we did the exhaust as well. Mm -hmm. The new wire installed. But I'm gonna wrap this one up now, way too long. Hopefully you guys are fine with one more. Because yeah, this thing is taking me longer than I, uh, longer than I first planned out. I was hoping it's gonna be a couple of weeks. <coughs> but uh, no, taking a bit longer. Do you still have a bunch of things on the list there that we need to sort out? So I'm not really sure what I will do first in the next episode. Probably gonna try to remove some of these um, locking bolts. I did order a new set of bolts and nuts. Should actually get it in a couple of days because I do need to put the wheels on and I need to put this thing to work for a bit. So not gonna do the bearings job just yet. I'm not really sure about it, but I think I might not be able to do it as of right now. In order to access the inner side of the drive shaft. Yeah, you could probably get like the first one from somewhere here maybe. But I definitely cannot access the second drive shaft because it's under the seat somewhere. So I need to get the gap up. And again, get the gap up in this room. I have three options. I'm gonna do that thing either in the mod outside by the way, I do not prefer that option. Second idea would be to in the director shed. Got plenty of headroom there. Or the third option would be the workshop expansion project. Beforehand. And once I finish the expansion project, I can do the wheel bearings. So yeah, guys, I have a little secret to tell you. I'm planning to do a workshop expansion. So I'm not really gonna spoil anything, but to keep things kinda on the low level, this entire wall here, gonna push it aside, don't need it. Gonna remove all of this and expand the workshop to this area. So the workshop would start from this point. And I somehow need to remove this ceiling beam if I want some extra headroom. So, don't tell anyone, just keep it a little secret, okay? But guys, keep your bands on. I'm not really sure when I'm gonna do this. I was planning to do it this year, summertime, but it all kind of depends. If I wanna work on the cabin, then I can do this bit. 
So I have to choose either continue to work on the cabin or start the expansion project. Just F Y I. I'm still deciding. So keep your pants on, man. I will go now. <laughs>